freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 257. Six. Six, Six? <laughs> one of those of Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearms.com, your nationwide hometown gun shop. I am one of your hosts, Cheryl Todd. And I'm the other guy, Dan. Our theme today, safety and security in the world. In today's, today's world. world. Mm. Yes. And our guest is Rick Vasquez. Rick is a United States government certified firearms classification expert who has represented the United States government as their firearms technical representative to other nations. Absolutely. Uh, currently, Rick is not only uh, providing firearms classification expertise to others, but also assists both foreign and domestic governments in firearms origin functionality and importability information welcome to the show rick well thank you very much for having me i i see dan every year at the sar show and i think this is the first time i met you i think so too i mean your face is so familiar to me that we probably have been in the same place at the same time but what better place to formally meet than where we get to really dig into a rich conversation and I mean, talking about today's world, things are just nuts out there. And uh, safety and security, if that's your field, I think you have some job security right now. <laughs> it seems to be. It's, it's growing and growing. And uh, you hate to grow on other people's misery and sorrow, but, but that's what's happening today. It's, it's just, it is unfortunate, but knowing how to maneuver and interact, I think is really so important and uh you know you have an impressive and lengthy career uh biography can you kind of walk us through some of the highlights of both your past and and presently what you're doing i, I sure can uh you know i entered the marine corps in 1974 so people gonna start guessing my age real quick and uh, thank you for your service and had a 21 year career uh where i was very fortunate that my career was in firearms or security related. I was either working at the precision weapon shop at Quantico or I did uh, Marine Corps security forces duty. Then I did embassy duty where I was a detachment commander of the, the Marine detachments. And my final posting was at the American embassy in Moscow, Russia. And uh, I served in Desert Storm as a, as a firearms expert where we introduced the Barrett 50 caliber directly into the hands of Marine snipers during combat operations. So that part was just circled around firearms and, and security. Then I left the Marine Corps, went to work for Diplomatic Security Service. Having worked in the State Department, so I made a lot of good contacts and went to work for them as a firearms instructor where we develop any type of live fire training you can imagine. It was, I tell people, it was the greatest job I ever had. And then I left there and went to ATF because it was a government job. You know, everybody wants some government benefits and and I had a wonderful career there. I, I went in in 1999, and in, in uh, uh, just a few short years, I went up to the assistant branch chief and then the acting branch chief of the farm technology branch. And after 14 years of traveling the world and uh, learning a lot more about firearms regulations and, and statutes, I left and took an early retirement and started Rick Vasquez Firearms, where I do exactly what I did for ATF, but on the civilian side, and then active crisis consultant, where we instruct security protocols, provide security training, firearms training. We've partnered up with ranges and, and other properties where we do 
a comprehensive analysis of security and then provide instruction on that analysis. Yeah, that's the thing is, you know, it's one thing to, to know it. It's another thing to impart it to others. And, uh, you know, I just want to pick your brain because of your background, because of all that you know and all that you've studied. What do you think of the unrest that we're seeing in our cities across the nation? And what do you recommend for average citizens to do to protect themselves uh, and, and to develop a security plan? Do we have to go to classes for that? Or can we, are there a few tips and tricks that maybe you can give to us here today? Well, that, those are so important uh, comments that you just brought up. Thank you. In, this, in today's society, we have to learn to protect and defend ourselves. I, I tell everybody that an alarm is only an alarm. That's what it is. It doesn't defend you. It doesn't jump in front of your child or your loved one if you're being attacked. It just notifies you that you're being attacked. And in this generation, people have become dependent on alarms and video uh, uh, of their home. And it's nice to see somebody robbing your house while you're at work, but they're still robbing your house. Right. And there's still no one there to stop them. That's an excellent point. <laughs> because law enforcement are stretched too thin and they have gotten scared of doing things that they used to do five years ago. Mm. So to get to your house on just a basic burglary call, I hate to say, it, but it's not a priority. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's not life in danger, it's not a priority because they've got riots and everything else going on and their numbers are being cut down more and more. So you must make yourself aware. That is the first thing that is important, awareness. If many of us live in this world where we walk down the sidewalk or the road with our head in a, in a phone, and it's mm -hmm. kind of funny, but it, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody around you who's looking to look for an easy meal ticket sees you. So you must discover awareness whatsoever. And, and I have written a lot of papers on this, and most of them are on my LinkedIn page, where you're looking, you're not looking, I hate to say this, but you have to be paranoid at all times. <laughs> you must be looking. If you see a chain of cars driving downtown, in a flurry, are you going to go downtown? Well, I hate to say this, but the curious people are going to say, let's go see what they're doing. And, and you don't want to do this. So awareness and then taking caution, being aware of your surroundings. And yes, I, I think you should take classes. I really, I really do. We have developed uh, classes in all manner of security training. And one of the things that we also offer is the legal side. Now, I'm not an attorney, but we have attorneys because uh, I, I don't want to get into politics and pick one side or the other, but there is one side that will come hit you with a two by four, but then if you shoot them, you're a murderer. And so, well, that's self-defense in my book. It's, so the attorney will talk the legal block of it and tell you what your state allows. We did CLE training. I did it in conjunction with, with George Lyon, who uh, helped win the Halo decision in D.C., and I'm pretty sure you guys know George. Yeah, and we absolutely. we CLE training in, uh, in D.C., and George did the legal block, and I did the, uh, the self-defense block. And that way, we have a perfect marriage, because we don't want people just to go get a gun and, and say, okay, if they walk in my front yard, they step to my grass, God, I can shoot them. I mean, you have to understand what your and their rights are. So, so I guess to answer your question, you have to do them all. You mm -hmm. have to do very aware. Um, and and I, this is a simple question I like to ask of people when I'm talking to them about security. And I'll ask you two, Dan and Cheryl, have you ever opened all the windows in your house and to see if you can go out your windows in case of an emergency? Mm. No. We have not. No. Not all of them, no. That's we, a great we, reminder. We, that's such a simple reminder. What if somebody is entering to your house, and, and I hate to say this, but this is a fact of life, and Dan is in a fight 
with two or three people in the front of the house, what are you going to do? I hate to say this, Cheryl, but you need to run out that house some way, somehow, because you're going to be a better help to go get additional help than if you mm -hmm. jump into the fray. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and a simple thing of a fire. You have a two or three story house and your house catches on fire on the lower level and your children do not know how to open up the windows. Mm -hmm. And that is a fact that, that really, how many times have we mm -hmm. seen on the afternoon news, children running down the road, barefoot underwear, uh, partially burned. And I hate to say this because they had no other escape, but to escape downstairs through the fire and the smoke because they were not aware of how to get out of their house in, in other ways. And those are very simple things that mm -hmm. we talk about. To, we don't, we don't want to teach everybody to be a gunfighting ninja because it's, it's not going to happen. We want to teach you security protocols, awareness procedures, so that you can defend yourself, hopefully, by escaping. Yeah. You know, everybody's not going to stand in the corner and you draw a gun, I draw a gun, you draw a knife, I draw a knife. The majority of the time, you're going to rescue yourself by leaving the area where there's mm -hmm. Well, Rick, you've answered about 10 questions that I was going to ask you in your conversation now. That's awesome. But, you know, we really have some things to uh, challenges us ahead of us because since January, there's been over 2 million brand new gun owners. And when I say new gun owners, these are gun owners that have not had training, have not had uh, any kind of idea of what they can and can't do with a firearm. And we need people like like you and your organization to, to help with this. And that, you know, that's a fact, right? And, and Dan, that's why I'm here talking to you guys today. Cause we want to get this information out and, and I don't want to kind of over talk you, but I'm glad you brought that up. I just instructed a husband and a wife team that they were about our age and they had never shot a firearm before. And you can go to a gun shop and do a, a 45 minute block uh, for $50. But in reality, what does that get you? I've taken two days already with this couple. And we start out with plastic bullets, handling the firearm, knowing how the firearm is, talking about threats in the house. And, and we have, we are not complete. I still owe them another date, but with, because of weather and everything else, we haven't got together. But a firearms training program is just like a flight training program. It doesn't end. It starts at one and it could go to 500 and then you could even go to 600. So don't become complacent and say, I went to the store, I bought a firearm and, and I don't want to insult firearms dealers. I, don't get me wrong, but that's their job to sell firearms. And, I, and, and they want to get that. Uh, it's just like anything else. They have to make a living. It's our, our own personal responsibility to go into and say, well, I learned how to drive this vehicle. Now I want to learn how to drive it around corners. I want to learn how to drive it faster. And I'm using that as an analogy. That if you buy a vehicle, that's what you do. So take it upon yourself to find someone who will take you from zero and work you up. And I'm going to throw this question at Cheryl. How many women do you see out in town dressed up, looking nice as you do today, with a holster on their side? Not very many with open carry, even though here in Arizona, we have constitutional carry, so you can open or conceal carry at your comfort level. Um, but yeah, very few actually open carry. Uh, but here in Arizona, there could be a whole bunch of them whose polka dot is their camo, like mine. That's exactly <laughs> right. So we teach women how to draw from a purse, yes. how to draw from a bag. The yeah, mother yeah. who's got a gun in her diaper bag because she's got four bags because she has children. So that's one of the things that we cover. And I hate to see you go to a lot of uh, firearms training and all they're doing is teaching women to draw from the holster. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, it doesn't occur in the private sector. Men will wear a holster under a jacket because it's very convenient. Uh, but most young ladies will not do that. So learn other techniques pay somebody to hire somebody and, and get a group. We also do homeowners and I'm going to be in Arizona in November. I'd love to meet with you guys again. And if 
And if you had a group of people that wanted a seminar, I'm going to be out there anyway. I'd be happy to do it for nothing. Uh, just you know, talk to homeowners, talk like we're talking right now. Spend awesome. a couple of hours and talk about security protocols uh, because that's our business and we want to develop business. But I'd be more than happy since I'm going to be out there anyway if, uh, to do something in Arizona and, and just to get some notoriety out there. We'll, uh, we'll look at those dates and see if there's something we can put together. What, what I want to tell the brand new firearms owners out there, don't be discouraged that we're telling you that you need training. Don't be discouraged that we're telling you that it takes a lot of training. When you come to a class, you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You'll want to do more training. It's not like you have to do more training. You'll want to, and you can go as far as you feel you need to go with it. You can make it a lifetime experience, or you can make it a, a couple sessions experience, right, Rick? That is correct. And, and what I generally do with, uh, uh, with people that want to go slow and, and proceed longer, I work out, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge them, but I work out an arrangement so that it doesn't cost them that much. Because we know there's, there's some people that are on lower income and some people at their higher income. That's just a fact of life. Right. And, and so that I, I hate to say this on public TV, but I, I will charge the people with less money less than I charge people with, with more money. And, and, no, and, the, and, and I found that the people who do have the money understand I do this and they don't complain because they understand the way it is. I don't want to, and I have done so much for free because I just, I can't see turning somebody away that really needs it. Yes. Right. And if they really need it, I'm not going to turn them away. It's just not going to happen. Okay. They might, might not as get as much, but they'll get at least an understanding. I don't know if it's always about the money. I mean, sure, it, it is an issue, but I think the time, people are afraid of, oh my gosh, I have to take 80 hours of class. <laughs> so, so the time can also be adjusted where, you could do some here, do some there, but I just, it, I just don't want you to be discouraged that you do need the training. No matter, even if you've had guns all your life, you need to know about the laws. You need to know about uh, how and when to carry. What kind? What is a threat? What's not a threat? Well, that takes me to my next question uh, for Rick, our, our guest, Rick Vasquez. Um, the status of gun ownership has certainly shifted in the past few months. There's millions of brand new first-time gun owners, people who uh, come from every conceivable demographic and background. Uh, what do you foresee, Rick, will happen in the near future uh, as far as federal laws and as far as state laws? And I'm just going to preface uh, this question by saying that the safer we are as responsible gun owners, the fewer laws that the, the law-hungry will have an opportunity to even try to gin up interest in. Um, and so that's why this training uh, is so important uh, in, in the grand scale. In the, in the small scale, it's, you know, keeping yourself safe, your family safe, your neighborhood safe. But in the grand scale, the more responsible we are, the, the better it is for everybody. But how do you see uh, all of this happening, laying the groundwork in, in the legal realm? Well, I'm going to hit it on a, on a state and federal level. Uh, unfortunately, the election is going to change everything this November. Mm -hmm. If if uh, the Democrats, I hate to, I don't want to make this political. This is just a fact. Mm -hmm. If if the Democrats take the presidency, uh, you're going to have federal gun laws recommended as soon as inauguration happens. Mm -hmm. It it will it will be severe. They will try to go with the California model. And, and I'm saying that because of what I heard when I was still with ATF and how many times they tried to push gun laws, which ATF doesn't get involved with making gun laws. Mm -hmm. On a state level, I'm living in an experiment right now. Virginia has changed over to blue and, and they are changing the gun laws on a weekly, if not monthly basis. Uh, they just passed a law in uh, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, where if you're a concealed carry, you cannot bring your firearm into the city. So now they're gonna have to narrow that down. Is it public building and what type of building it is? So we're on the middle of the, of the politics Virginia is right now. 
uh, and they've already started changing the gun laws. They're, they're trying to implement an assault weapon ban. They've gone to the one gun, uh, to the one gun a month only, which they did years ago and they proved it didn't work, but they've gone again. I foresee that states are getting more and more smart about what they can do with gun laws. And as they become, uh, their elected officials become more anti-gun, the states are gonna be very, very restrictive. And I even had this discussion the other day and I, I believe that within 10 years, our country is gonna be separated by conservatives and liberals, mm. where the conservatives move to certain states and liberals move to certain states, even though the liberals are moving out of the states that they've changed and, and, and all the laws in, for example, New York, New Jersey, Kinnick, Massachusetts, they're moving out uh, because the taxes are so high and any gun ownership is a big issue with a lot of people. So that's what I think is going to happen. I think you're going to see an attack on state laws uh, because it's easier to change the law on a state side and then people are going to be very restrictive. My wife and I are looking at moving out uh, next, next summer about leaving Virginia and after the Marine Corps and everything else. I've never lived longer in one place and in, except Virginia, and I consider it my home, but now it's to the point that we're going to have to move because my profession is firearms. That's what I do. So yeah. I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Yeah. And that is unfortunate. I mean, it's the, the reality, but it is unfortunate that sometimes, you know, people have to leave a place that they otherwise love and have invested in because the laws around them change. Uh, we go to California quite a bit. We live in Arizona, so we go to California quite a bit to uh, serve people that live there because they're like, I've lived in the same house for 50 years or whatever. Uh, I've had these same firearms for, you know, bunches of years. And suddenly, because laws changed, the things that I own are causing me to be on the wrong side of the law. And nothing changed other than the laws, you know? And so they are forced with, do they relocate and come to another state? Uh, or do they, you know, hire somebody like us to come and, and remove the guns? We're federally licensed, so we're allowed to, to move the guns and, and bring them to Arizona and, and sell them either through our store or our auction house. But w if all of these people relocate, like you're saying, then... It's, it feels unfortunate to me that, you know, we don't have a counter voice. I think it's so important and powerful to our nation to have a counter voice, an intelligent debate on these kinds of topics um, and, and issues. And if, if the counter voice has to leave, then what's left? I, I think it just leads to an extremism. And I, I think it's unfortunate. And that is exactly what's happening. But, but Cheryl, this is a question I've asked numerous law enforcement around the world. And in the United States, I've asked uh, persons who don't agree with me. I just asked them a simple question. If you had a favorite firearm that you dreamed of owning, just, just close your eyes and say, God, if I had the ability to own this firearm, I would own this firearm. And you own that firearm the next day, would you become a drug dealer? Would you become an anarchist? Would you become a criminal? And they all say, well, no. I said, well, thank you very much because I'm a gun owner and I'm not a criminal and I'm not an anarchist and I do not want to trade in illegal drugs. And they get the picture mm -hmm. because the laws that they pass affect us. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden right here. Mm -hmm. We will abide by whatever law that is passed because that's what we do. But the criminal is not going to abide by those laws. He's been to jail. He mm -hmm. knows what it's like. He'll do another couple of years and then he'll come out and buy another illegal firearm. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. They, they're really, that is exactly how it works. And it seems so... <clears throat> common sense to us, but then the side that loves to appropriate that phrase, 
you know, says common sense gun laws. It's like, <laughs> you know what? Last I checked, and I, I will double check again, murder is already illegal everywhere. And somehow it doesn't, it hasn't eradicated murder. Uh, laws haven't eradicated murder. So I don't know why we keep thinking that, you know, more laws piled on top of laws are actually going to mandate good behavior. Rick, minigun. That's my <laughs> That's list. Your... <laughs> I haven't got a minigun yet. <laughs> so that's well, on my list. Well, you might find one at the SAR show this year. Yeah. I, I know. They're just so, so expensive. Now, you don't but, mean a minigun like a pew pew. You know, he knows you what I mean. mean. No, no, no. I know, but our listening I mean. audience, they're yeah. like, what's a minigun? The eight barrel, uh, uh, was it JU 34? Yeah. That they mount on helicopters. Yeah, it's one that when you shoot it, you don't hear a break between shots. There's a, <laughs> there's 2,000 rounds, <laughs> right? Nobody can afford to shoot it, but. Um, no, I didn't say I'd shoot it. You just want to own it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so just as we start wrapping up, in, in our intro, I said that you are, uh, you talk about firearms origin, functionality, and importability. Um you know, what, how is that something, is that something that the average listener out there is going to be able to use, or is that like a specialized field within the firearms business? Well, it is a very specialized field, uh, and, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to have that skill because it pays well, but I work for, I won't mention their names, several of the most major firearms companies in the United States, and I work for some of the smallest dealers in the United States. If there's a question that a person has a concern with that, he's, that he doesn't want to call the federal uh, authorities and ask, uh, they can call me. Of course, you know, it's, I, I have clients. Uh, I work with uh, people literally on a daily basis to fix the issues they have or to instruct them. I, I instruct how to log your guns in, what is manufacturing, how do you deal in the NFA, how do you deal in the Gun Control Act, what's a silencer, what are the components of a silencer, how do you import a firearm, what are the federal laws in Mexico, what are the federal laws in El Salvador. Uh, I, I do everything that's in the firearms regulation guide. I assist the basic firearms owner to the top of the chain. That's could I, could awesome. I? And they find you through your LinkedIn? They can find me through LinkedIn or through my Active Crisis Consulting website or through Rick Vasquez Firearms websites. There's three ways to find me. And my email and phone number is on all three of the websites. Awesome. Go ahead, Dan. So Sorry. A, uh, I'm not going to ask a question. Well, I guess I am going to ask a question. <laughs> what happened, Rick? I mean, what happened with the bump stock thing? Well, as you know, I, I supported that in the lawsuits. And I work for, uh, uh, for the company out of Pennsylvania and for Gun Owners of America and uh, attacked it in both manners. And when I listened to the judge give her opinion, we just won it. It was, she's talking and, you know, what previous opinions and everything. And then her last few sentences were, but the government has the authority to change their opinions. So basically... It was not going to be one. And everybody agrees it was not a machine gun per the definition of what is a machine gun. So they rapidly wrote a regulation, not a law. They wrote a regulation to cover the butt stocks. Right. What a terrible way. And you know, the, the, the thing that I don't understand is they, they didn't compensate the people that lost money for a decision that was made by the government as an approval at one time. And did everything correctly. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing, because there's supposed to be something in the Constitution that says if the government uh, uh, takes, takes the item, confiscates the item, that you'll be compensated. And I don't know of anybody, I don't know how that happened. No, they, they lost and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we need to start wrapping up. And so tell folks again, uh, if they want to benefit from your extensive experience and knowledge in all the various ways that we've talked about today, how do they reach out to you and follow the work that you do, Rick? 
Well, I just said three ways to find me. My LinkedIn, uh, Rick Vasquez Firearms, or Rick Vasquez at Active Crisis Consulting. And all of my information is on there. And I reiterate my offer to you too, that when I'm out there in November for the SAR show, you have the dates. If you wanna put something together, a homeowners association, any group that you have, I would be more than happy to do it. I appreciate that offer. And I wanna remind everybody that's coming to the SAR show this year, which is a go as we know right now, that they can come by and, and meet Rick because he's always there. Mm -hmm. I've, every year I see you, Rick. I so, set up a table and talk to anybody for nothing. That's awesome. at the Arizona mm. State Fairgrounds at the end. Actually, it's in December this year, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it the first weekend of December? Fourth, fifth, sixth? I think, I like think it's still November, isn't it? No, is it still it's, it's in December. <laughs> we'll get All our right. facts straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it we'll post it directly. Yes. For but sure. anyway, yeah. Uh, so, Rick, thank you very much for coming on the show today. And we wish you all the success in the world. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We will talk soon. Bye-bye. 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 All right. This man, I've, I've used his brain many times. And when I first got in my NFA license, you know, the uh, class manufacturer license, he helped me so much in questions. And I really appreciate what he's done for the community, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, there's a lot of brand new federal farms licensed people that, you know, you try to read the regulations. They're, the book is, they can't even make the book anymore. It's so thick. It's all online. And so, um, you know, he was just very helpful and always willing to, uh, to work with us. That's so. awesome. And it, it is so, um, it's good to have somebody that has a lifetime of experience uh, to kind of weigh in because some of the, like you were saying, some of the laws, it's like when we go and we vote and it's basically once you really read it, it's like you got to vote in order to say yes. You got to vote no yeah. in order to say yes. You know, there's right. some things like that that you're like, wait a minute, what now? What did I just read? And so, um, Anyway, it's great to have people out there like Rick. At 21 years in the Marine Corps, we didn't say thank you enough for that. Yeah, thank you for that service. That was service. awesome. 21 years. Yeah, you for know? sure. That's dedication, so. for sure. Rick, All thank right. you for being on the show. Yeah. And we want to thank our awesome listeners as well. Yes. Uh, the fact that you are spending your time with us is everything. Yes. And whether you are watching us on the OpsLens smartphone app, on the YouTube, the YouTube, the YouTube, on GunStreamer, or whether you are listening to our audio only on Spotify, we're on where you Spotify can now. binge listen to your heart's content. <laughs> Absolutely. All of the episodes now it's that gonna we... Be, it's going to be you making fun of me making fun of you. I, I, yeah, for sure. I need to do that. But then it's going to get totally ridiculous. But um, yeah, so binge listen to your heart's content on uh, our website, gunfreedomradio.com. Click the on-demand tab. If you click the guest tab, you will see photos and bios and links to all the guests that we've ever had on. And that book, if that was a book, it would be as thick as the federal regulations book is <laughs> because we're really getting a, quite a group of, we are so blessed with the people that we've had on the show. That is. The guests that we've had on. So just true. awesome. And, you know, it's just, every type, every kind. And it's just, you can't get bored with that. No, it's really a, a wonderful resource of people who are uh, fields, um, experts in their field who have given of their time and their expertise to come on Gun Freedom Radio and, and talk about, um, you know, what is happening in their particular area. Um, and, and, you know, it's, we, what I've learned, it's not just about guns. You know, I mean, and owning guns, the responsibility for owning guns is more than just having a gun in your door. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to it. It's, it's how to be a, um, a, a responsible gun owner and how to carry your life, not just with the guns, but your marriage, your business, your uh, activities with other people, all this socializing, whatever. There's so much to it that and we bring that to you with the show because it's, we don't always just talk about the gun. Absolutely. We actually, we kind of rarely talk about the tools themselves. And 
that I don't really know why that is. I just personally find the issues and the politics and the the nuts and bolts of our culture and all that just personally I find that more interesting. <laughs> so right. since I'm the one that generally you know, is reaching out and booking the guests. I guess that's the area that we stay in. But we really, you know, we could spend more time bringing people on that are talking about the the actual tools themselves. Um, let us know if if you want more guests like that. Uh, reach out to us. Our email is talk at gunfreedomradio.com. You can DM us on any of our social media platforms. We're on, of course, Facebook and Twitter and um, Instagram. Uh, Richard Vasquez talked a lot about LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn, but man, I just don't spend enough time there. And sometimes people are waiting for a long time for me to answer their inquiries. And uh, I apologize for that. So you mean somebody could actually ask if they could be on the show? If they're in that happens all the time, yeah, actually, right. it's really exciting for me when somebody is like, um, could I possibly and I'm like, yeah, you, if you are a subject matter expert. I mean, if you've got value to bring to our audience, then, then yes, absolutely. We've had people reach out because they wrote a book. We've had people reach out because they're hosting a, a big seminar or a rally or something like that. And so, yeah, absolutely. Well, I've been waiting for Donald Trump to call and ask if he could be on the show. He's a little busy right I now, know he is. Um, but at some point I'm sure he will get around to uh, reaching out and asking if he can be our guest. <laughs> He's actually, uh, we're in the studio today on Monday, August, uh, no, wait, where are we at? Septem September 14th. Holy cow, I lost track of my months, um, 2020. And uh, I believe that the president is making a pass through here on his campaign. Yeah, he's in tour. Nevada. He was in Nevada yesterday mm -hmm. and he's coming to Phoenix, uh, I think, today. Yeah, I don't know where he's going to be or what he's going to be doing here, but um, I'm sure he's trying to whip up some excitement for the election. It's going to be a doozy. And Donald, this we just want you, we want you to know, Donald, the door is always open. Door is always open. Absolutely. Mr. President. Yes. Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought. No, she's, it's okay. You thanked everybody. You want us to pray for a nation. I do. You really want us to pray for a nation. How about our leaders and our representatives? Pray for them? Yep. Pray how, for them. How about the ones you don't really like? That are, I don't consider them leaders. So I don't have to pray for them. Leaders lead. Leaders who have the title of being leaders that aren't leaders don't lead. So they're not leaders. How about our so, representatives? Same thing. You represent, you represent. You don't represent, but you're a representative. You're not a representative. Well, you got that? Here's what you I'm going to do. Do you have it? I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I'm going to pray for our leaders and our representatives, and I'm going to pray even for the ones I don't like, and I'm going to pray especially for the ones that maybe aren't my favorite. I'm going to top you on that. Yeah. I'm just going to pray for everybody. Everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Except that one, oh, one person in the San Francisco <laughs> area that has what, hair curlers on her, hair dryers on her trees now? Probably needs... More I'm not praying for the rest of us. But anyway, all right. Hey. Have an awesome week. Be good to each other. And God bless. Bye bye. <laughs>